Dude. Last time with that fucking nursery rhyme fucking bullshit. <laughs> with the, on the phone. Like, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but you know, you know, for it's, I don't know. It just always freaky to me. Maybe it's just. Maybe it's just me. And then the alarm goes off or, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, back to insanity. Nishi Joe Takami's alma mater, uh, Kid Kidizawa Second Elementary School, was about five, uh, five minute walk from the private train station. Bon Yushiji had attempted to contact Takami's elementary school teacher over the phone. Oh, Jesus. Only to be told that they had, unfortunately, passed away. Oh, well. Left with no other choice, Bon had decided to set up a meeting to speak with the person who had answered the phone instead. The head teacher, Kamio, I almost said Kamino. <laughs> we ain't there. <laughs> Not long after... He had arrived at the school together with his partner. As it was a Saturday, the school gate was closed. The two detectives, Bon and Sua, stopped in front of it and turned their attention toward the school building. See? Again, I tell ya, Billy Williams, man. <laughs> you can't stop him when he's got you cornered. <laughs> the white walls of the school's exterior had been painted with a brightly colored eye-catching mural. Due to his complex lack of knowledge on paintings or any other kind of fine art, Bon had no idea what it signified, but the way the spiral-shaped mural transitioned vertically into an array of seven different colors reminded him of a rainbow. Pretty. <laughs> but as Bon stared at the mural, cooling himself with his handheld fan, his partner, Sua, pushed the intercom button next to the school gate. Hello? <laughs> Suddenly, Bon looked around. He had a feeling that someone was watching him. Why has everyone always got a feeling they're being watched? The eyes! Uh, <laughs> there was a gaze that seemed to follow him everywhere, leaving him quite discomfited. Yes. <laughs> Words fail me. He attempted to strike a casual pose, one that aimed to be dandy and refined. Senpai, nani henna pose shite <laughs> Ooh. Uramon no hou ni tsuyou guchi ga aru nde, sotchi ni maawatte kurette. Alright. Uh, Bon retired from his pose with a sigh and headed toward the back of the building. Oh, I'm already, like, stressed out. I don't know why. <laughs> the staff room was easy to find. As soon as they entered the side door, all they had to do was travel down the rear entrance hallway and turn a single corridor to arrive at the room. There was, of course, no sign of children in the school, although it was likely a mere illusion created by the smooth linoleum floor. The two detectives felt far colder inside the building than they had outside. I mean, it might be. <laughs> there were three teachers in the staff room. Upon seeing the two detectives enter the room, one of the three stood up and bowed. Yeah, show some respect to Billy Williams. The man who stood up was named Camino. God damn it, I did it again. A uh, Camillo. <laughs> His mostly white hair had parted to the side, and he greeted the two of them with a genuine smile. What you looking at on the laptop there? Hold up. <laughs> Bon and Sua showed their police badges to him almost simultaneously, returned his greeting briefly, then immediately approached the topic at hand. It was Sua's job to ask the questions. ここの卒業生である西条拓海君について教えていただきたいんですが、彼のことは印象に残っています。私は担任ではなかったから詳しくとなると無理ですが、それでも構いませんか？ he was a bit of a psychopath. Wait, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Sua nodded, taking out his text textbook. Wait a minute, notebook, and preparing to write everything down. Nishijou-kun wa donna ko datta nsu ka? Oh, weirdo. Muzukashi ko da to kiteimashita. Tokushu da to. Yeah, 
I'm dealing with that when I'm playing him. Okay, now, like, not everything could be a disease, okay? Let's just... <laughs> そこまで私が言ってしまっていいのかどうか Oh boy Digging further deep Schools had recently begun adopting this approach Where they would avoid any issues That may provi uh, prove difficult to them They refuse to take part in anything That may earn them complaints from parents Or any other, uh, other parties such practices made it extremely and incredibly difficult for the police to do their jobs. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And it wasn't our fault at all. Kodomotachiwakeo <laughs> Well, didn't we, like, wish they would just fall, or, like, have a bus accident and the teacher would die? Like, we were very specific. Nope. <laughs> Well, in response to Bond's question, Kamio shook his head lightly. You would like look at that and be like, man, such a bullet was dodged there. Okay, listen, I was forced to stay home, alright? Leave us alone. Bond, too, had a faint recollection of the accident. For multiple days following the incident, in the short glimpses Bond caught of the news, he would always see the media swarming the house of the sole boy who had not been involved in it. For some reason, while Kamio was repeating himself, he placed a strong emphasis on the word accident. Yeah, it even did like the thing. Yeah, see? <laughs> He's like, you put it in italicies. <laughs> oh. Yes, accident. Look, we didn't know. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> we didn't know we had this power. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'd started talking with Grim a lot more before booting up ESO recently. To the point where it was becoming almost like a ritual. I don't think it's helping with our sanity. It never really mattered wh what we talked about. We trade interesting or funny at channel threads. Go off on about porny shit. Wreck each other. Not, not like wreck. You know what I mean. <laughs> Recommend each other new comics. Talk about the anime from the day before. Or other various dumb stuff. Funnily enough, we didn't actually talk about ESO very much, but that was just because we already talked a lot about it while we're playing it. Makes sense to me. Uh oh, I gotta click. I gotta I always forget. I just wanna do it, have it do it for me. Deets, please. Has there been uh, some weird ass prank going on recently? Not a lot to go off there, Deets, please. I don't know. I just heard about it from someone I know. Mm hmm. Don't know if it's actually a fad or some shit. It's like. Hmm? I had to like two click that one. There's a recording of a weird sound and you get that as a voicemail or something. Oh no. It's. What? Like a Moe voice whispering sweet nothings to you, lol? I wish! Instead, we got some scary shit. <laughs> the, the fuck? LMAO? What ero eroge is that from? You gotta say it with that Spanish sheen, you know? I mean, wouldn't you... <laughs> ugh, look, stop making noises, I'm talking. I mean, wouldn't you rather them just do that to you in person, lol? No one cares now whose fucking eyes are those eyes. Ah, stop with everything. 
uh, we know it's just us like doing that because <laughs> of our fucking sleepwalking quote 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 Grim was still saying that thanks to that I started to feel awful pretty much immediately not to mention that he was talking really weird in chat to the point where it felt fairly forced like he was trying way too hard to be funny by shoving those words in or at the very least I didn't find it funny. In fact, it felt more cringy than anything. But I couldn't let myself get angry with him until I'd gotten my info about the prank. So I was forced to put up with it. I would hate seeing anybody say that. <laughs> okay, so it, it's like the sounds of a wild otaku freak fapping then? Lol. Okay, that's too far. Dude, imagine. <laughs> But in all seriousness, the they play "You May Pass." You may pass. Well, like what? What? Like the song, the one that plays at crosswalks and shit. Yeah, that one. And 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 then while it's playing, it gets cut off halfway and swapped to a buzzer-like sound. I did not like it at all, dude. Not at all. Apparently, the volume is irritating here. <laughs> You need a warning for that, like, uh, you know, you know how they put it at the video? Warning! Very loud. <laughs> so yeah, ever heard of a prank like that? That's kind of the thing you'd find floating around at channel, right? Yesterday, I'd gotten a voicemail with a mysterious buzzer sound. I had no idea who sent it, and the contents unsettled me for some reason. There ain't no for some reason! <laughs> Which was why I decided to try and ask Grim if he knew about it. If it was just a simple prank, I could just forget about it. <gasps> well, uh, Grim wasn't responding. Why? Why was he? Why was he being silent? Look, maybe he's thinking. <laughs> let him. Let him. Let. Him, as the kids would say, let him cook. Hello. Did you die? Don't say that in this world. Still no response. Grim didn't usually fall asleep like this. In fact, this was the first time it ever happened. If he actually had fallen asleep, then I guess I'd just log off. We'd meet up again later in ESO anyway, so I could just bring it up then. But the second I thought that and began to get up from my chair. No. Oh, kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> Don't give the Metal Gear solid. I was sifting through at channel. Yeah, see, I was looking for stuff about your prank. Oh, so that's why he disappeared. Well, that meant that even the oh-so-well-informed Grimm hadn't known about the prank. But no matter how many threads or boards or whatever I searched, I found nothing. Not on that channel, nor anywhere on the net. Well, I guess I'm just fucked then. Hmm. So, would that mean that whoever pulled the prank had some sort of personal grudge against me? <laughs> I was still curious about the true identity of the caller, but I wasn't brave enough to call him back. Huh. It's the only way you're going to find out. We, wait, that's it. Since I knew the phone number, that meant I could have someone else call it for me. Yeah, let's throw our problems on someone else. That's great. Fucking talk to me, I swear. That way, they could take the fall. Oh my god, I, I, I can't. <laughs> let someone else die for us. Ken, the best person... For the job would be either Nanami or Misumi-kun. Just throw your sister, who's been nothing but kind to you, under the bus. Of which crashed and killed the teacher. Um, wait. Misumi-kun may have been brainwashed by the demon girl, so that wouldn't work. As for Nanami, however, I, I was sure I'd have no trouble asking her to do it. She'd probably get pissed off at me afterward, and, but who gives a shit? Hell, if anything, it'd be good to, for her to suffer the tortures of society every once in a while. This, <laughs> the one ally you have in this world. <laughs> and you treat her like garbage. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. To be fair, he treats pretty much everybody like garbage. I, pretty much. I thank Grim for his help promised that I'd meet back up with him on ESO in a few hours and close the chat. Right as I did so, I felt my stomach growl. Man, I was hungry. Did I have any cup ramen stock somewhere? Uh, probably. 
whatever the hell's in this room. I tried looking around for a bit, but I couldn't find anything. Reluctantly, I decided to head to the convenience store to buy some. <sighs> we walk out, immediately get accosted by Remy. <laughs> Have a heart attack. <laughs> the sun was already setting. I wanted to avoid getting out late at night as much as possible because every time I did recently, nothing good ever came out of it. Yeah, I would no, never go out at night. Never. I unconsciously started walking faster, hurrying down the road toward the convenience store. Nothing bad can happen there, right? Come on. Today was a Saturday, so I'd expected to run across a ton of pedestrians, but I hadn't encountered a single one so far. Creepy. All the stores that uh, should have been open were closed, which kind of weirded me out. Oh, great. <laughs> maybe I was just confused. Like, maybe I thought it was 7 p.m. when it was actually 2 a.m. <laughs> have you guys, has anyone done that before? <laughs> yeah, like that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But even so, it was way too quiet. I could barely hear the normal city noises you'd expect. The aura of the city was giving off was different than usual. Nope. Retreat back to the bunker. <laughs> Is the convenience store still good? It has to be. I arrived at the Shinsen Station convenience store. It was right in front of the train station, and yet there wasn't a single person here either. Okay, I was starting to get more and more freaked out. Uh, wait, is there someone working in there at least? <laughs> The sudden disappearance of something I'd taken for granted was enough to make me feel like I'd been transported to a completely different world. Don't say that. On a normal day, I would always avoid running into or talking to other people, but all I wanted right now was just to see another person's face. You know it's bad. You know he's like having a slight mini panic attack when he wants to see a person's face. I burst inside the convenience store. There has to be someone working here, I thought to myself as I looked around the store. Anybody? Hello, please, God. Oh. Okay, I gotta think positive here. There was no one here. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna go positive. I gotta think positive. We gotta, we gotta just not listen. We gotta be careful. There were no customers, nor any employees. <laughs> Masaka. Maybe it's just me, but if this was the case, I'd be like, I, like I said, retreat back to the bunker. I'd be like, nope, going in my storage cell. <laughs> this couldn't be happening. An employee had to be in the back. Especially, yeah, it's, it's extra weird when I could just walk in and there's no employee. They have to be here. If I were to just bring something up to the register, they should come out right after. So I decided to leisurely grab a box lunch, pretend to flip through a manga magazine while I was at it, and then come to the counter and set the box down. <laughs> Please, positive, help me. Is it going to do the... Yeah, okay. Give me the wibbly wobbly. I must see the wibbly. That's how I know I'm s safe? Question mark? No one came out. Maybe there really wasn't anyone here. Fine. If that was the case, then... I grabbed the box lunch off the counter and headed straight for the automated door. It's just, it's just, I, guess we're re I guess we're just gonna resort to stealing. I stood in front of the door and it opened automatically, but just as I was about to step outside... Okay. Oh, <laughs> Wait a minute. An employee finally emerged from the back room behind the register. He was a bleary, gloomy-looking guy, most likely a college student. He leaned over the counter and glared at me with dull eyes. <laughs> to be, yeah, we did, yes. Uh, I have no excuse. I shrugged my shoulders and walked back to the register. He shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> wow. The employee bowed his head with a shit-eating grin. Felt like he was mocking me. I was pissed. This convenience store clearly didn't give a shit about training its part-timers. You would not be talking like this. You're just trying to be a big boy. What? Wow. I mean, he's not wrong of what we are. 
I swung at him without thinking, and this is positive. <laughs> I guess he's more. I guess he's confident, I suppose, rather than being a little bitch. Uh, ow! What? What the fuck? <laughs> okay, this is entirely unrealistic. We have no muscles in our body. My incredibly fast straight punch hit him square in the nose. With a pathetic yelp, he flew backwards, collided with the shelf, then fell to the ground. Now we have shoplifting and assault on our record. And murder. <laughs> a magnificent punch, if I do say so myself. Who was it? I'm sorry. As blood gushed from his nose, the employee got down on his hands and knees and bowed with tears in his eyes. <laughs> Oh my god. While I was at it, I swiped four of the Doc Doriaki that were on display by the register and headed for the door satisfied. <laughs> Throwing out that line to get the perfect last word, I leisurely exited the store. Would the bad one have been me getting beat up? Because that's more realistic. <laughs> Several minutes had passed while I was having my delusion. There was still no sign of any employees. I had no intention of staining my hands with DQN behavior, despite my delusion just now. That being said, I also couldn't bring myself to yell out for an employee either. So I just stood there in a deserted store without moving. Ah, uh, antisocial problems. I wanted to believe that the employee was just taking a nap, so I waited for another five minutes. But while I waited, no employee showed up, nor did any customers enter the store. There wasn't even so much as a sound. Nope. Time to leave. We should have left like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> A.K.A. we should have never left our, our room. After enough time had passed, I started feeling scared, so I put the box lunch back on the shelf and left the store. Well, yeah, there's nobody here. Nobody outside. I'm... S oh, I don't like this street. I don't like this street. I opted to go to the railroad crossing located right next to the station. From there, I'd be able to see the Shinsen Station platform. There was no way a place like that would be deserted, right? That was what I hoped, but there was no one there. I waited for, the tra for a train to come. Once that happened, there would be a bunch of passengers that would get off. But even if no one got off, I'd definitely see people riding the train as it passed by in front of me. Oh, there's... Li it's it's deserted. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that too. Even after ten minutes, a train still hadn't come. Oh, I tried to convince myself that there must have been an accident or something that messed with the schedule, but there was no sign of any passengers on the platform. It was then that I finally realized the gravity of the situation. This was weird. This was really, really weird. That's it. I'll go to Shibuya Station. There was abso there absolutely had to be people there. No doubt about it. There were people in the in front of the Shibuya Station 24/7 without fail. I broke into a run without thinking. The only person. Oh. <laughs> See, we don't work out, so... I ran as hard as I could. I didn't want to stop, even if I was out of breath. Well, we're good at running, I suppose. It was probably the first time in my life that I'd ever run so hard. Bullshit! You ran very hard with that murder. As I ran, I hoped that this was just some kind of sick dream I was having. But I knew it wasn't. Just some crazy delusion. My heart and lungs felt like they were about to explode. The pain was far beyond what you could feel in a dream. It surprised me how unbelievably fast I was breathing. And yet, no matter how much I inhaled, the pain refused to go away. <laughs> Dead. I... Uh, and there's nobody. <laughs> As I kept running down Dog and Zaka, I finally saw 107. By the time I did, my legs were already shaky. My body felt extremely heavy. Even so, I forced my feet to keep moving. I no longer had it in me to pay attention to my surroundings. The entirety of my consciousness was focused on Scramble Crossing, the symbol of Shibuya. Almost there, just a bit further. The second I passed 107, it'd be right there. 
the largest in Japan. It was the place where the largest number of people in Japan all came together all at once. That was why. That was why I had to get to scramble. To scramble. <laughs> God damn. There's going to be nobody there and it's going to be even freakier. Oh, God. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Empty. That was the state of Shibuya Station, which I could see from the Y Junction running in front of 107. A world without sound. A world that felt dead. A place which had always been flooded with overwhelming sound, now ruled by silence. The only thing I could hear was the sound of my own heavy breathing. I fell to my knees in the middle of the large street. I couldn't walk another step. The shock had stolen every last ounce of strength from my body. What is happening? That looks like it to me. There was no one to my left, to my right, in front of me, behind me. There was no one anywhere. Even though 7 p.m. on a Saturday night was when Shibuya should have been the most crowded. What was going on? This wasn't happening. This couldn't be happening. Just, yeah, just close your eyes. Let's just chill for a second. Let's think and then get up and leave. I closed my eyes and cradled my head. This was a dream. An illusion. This couldn't be reality. Can we delusion us up uh, our normal world, please? <laughs> yes, it was true that I wanted to live a quiet and peaceful life all by myself. I didn't want anyone to interfere with me, and I didn't want to get involved in anything. But that didn't mean I wanted to live in a world where no one existed. I feel like that's how most people think. Like, for me, I, I, I don't like people. <laughs> I, I hate dealing with them when I go outside. I hate talking with them when I have to. But I don't want everyone in the world to, like, be gone. Because that would just be awful. It's like how I like playing MMOs by myself. But I like when seeing other people. Because it makes me feel not... I guess I guess it's like a weird... I'm not actually alone in this world kind of a feeling, if that makes sense. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but anyway. <laughs> if no one else existed, who would pay for my living expenses? Uh, he's thinking. He's thinking with the right mind. If no one else existed, who would make box lunches for me to eat? If no one else existed, who would play ESO with me? If no one else existed... <coughs> oh! A sound! Who is it? Hello? A sound. I heard a sound. It hadn't come from me. It had been from someone else. Someone was here. Someone other than me was nearby. Or it was just the wind, like, hitting a, a sign or something. I felt like I'd been saved. As I thought, uh, it was just a coincidence. It only appeared like there was no one here. But in truth, no one had disappeared. I wasn't the only one left in the world. I was so relieved that I almost started crying. I turned my gaze toward the sound. I don't want to... Oh my god. Nope. Get out. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> nope. It was a boy in a wheelchair a short distance away from me, though still in the middle of the intersection. He sat quietly in place. I couldn't quite figure out how old he was. If I had to guess from his size alone, I'd say he looked like he was in elementary school. He was wearing a hat so low that I couldn't see his expression very well. But... Oh, nope. I could hear the boy's voice extremely clearly. Felt like he was whispering directly into my ear, which made me turn around. Of course, there was no one there. Uh extra freaky but you know let's go along keep going along with this even though he was younger than me I ended up speaking formally to him I mean we're just assuming here okay despite how young his voice sounded there was nothing childish about it 
僕のメッセージは受け取ってくれたあメッセージ ?What message? The voicemail? I had no idea what he was talking about. だ誰だ君は Are you you? Oh no. The boy moved his wheelchair forward slightly. The wheelchair was old and it made a rusty sound as it came closer to me. その目誰の目<笑>でしょ Every time I lose more sanity. Luckily, I have a lot of it, so it's probably by the end of this game, I'm gonna lose like all of it and I'll just be fully insane. But I was confused. Why had he murmured, Whose eyes are those eyes just now? Who was he? Oh, God. Oh, I hear his, I hear the heart beating. <laughs> I rubbed my eyes to wipe away my tears, and because of that, I was finally able to get a clear look at the boy's face. Let me take a look. <laughs> He's lit. He looks like a fucking corpse. This wasn't a boy. His skin was covered with wrinkles like an old man. His cheeks were hollow, his eyes sunken, or sockets had sunken to, in, to an abnormal extent. His pupils were cloudy, cloudy, he had no eyebrows. What kind? And his body was as small as a child's. Oh, Shogun oh my god. What? Wait, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, I forgot to breathe. How to breathe? My head felt like it'd been struck by a hammer. The ground was shaking violently. No, my body was falling over. I shot my hands out to the asphalt to keep myself upright. What? What had he just said? <sighs> okay, let's just get closer. Just let's hash this out. Shogun. He was. Shogun? But that's what we're good at! I lifted my head and watched as Shogun, who had already turned his back to me, left Scramble Crossing. His wheelchair was getting farther and farther away, making a creaking sound as it moved. Bro! Well, that just throws everything out the window. What's going on now? Oh shit, the thought of chasing after him and pressing for answers didn't even cross my mind. I'm sorry, look, I, we gotta get out of the way. I didn't think of running up and punching him in the face for dragging me into this either. I wasn't even remotely a confrontational person. Of course not. My head started to hurt. The area around my temples throbbed with pain. Still cowering on the spot, I tried to endure it. <laughs> Whoa! In a world without sound, a discordant noise began to spread. An all-encompassing static. See, now we're back to reality. Snap back to reality. <laughs> Whose voice was that? Oh god, I don't like the- Hello? Don't look at me. That's how I think every time. What had previously just been a random discordant mess of garbled static gradually turned into a real voice. Someone gently placed a hand on my shoulder. It's like, it's like, why, are you in, it's like why are you in the street, you idiot? <laughs> it ain't, I mean, it is a performance of some kind. While still trying to endure the pain of my headache, I looked up. Get, listen, get me out. Get me out of here. Bring me back home. <laughs> the demon girl, Remy, was peering at my face as she stood over me. Eyes that were clear and full of life. Eyes that looked at me and only me. See, this is what the background should be. I didn't like when it was all empty. Again, this girl had appeared out of nowhere once again. She wrapped her uh, a hand under my arm and tried to make me stand up. I shrieked and shook her off. I came to my senses and looked around. 
I was still in the middle of the street, but it wasn't deserted anymore. There were people around me in every direction, walking every which way without paying me any mind. <laughs> Remy, with a face that looked like she was about to cry, reached out to me once more. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> And he's gonna just, just... When I screamed, the throbbing in my head transformed into an intense, stabbing pain. Even so, I ignored it. Scrambled back on all fours to try and get away from Remy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Could the possibility that, like, Shogun is still us, but, like, from some... Because, like, they're making it... Because, like, like, looking at him, you can't tell who he is if you, if you were going to end up recognizing him as somebody. So could it actually just be us a a still anyway? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. You ain't gonna kill shit. Now calm down. Just give him Yeah, yeah, show him. Slap his stupid face. An abrupt impact ran through my cheek. It stung with pain and it began to heat up. She'd slap me. Do it again. Beat his ass. She's going to kill me once and for all. Dude, she just slapped you. Calm down. You're saying all that bullshit? I'd slap you too! I'll give you a good old punch, actually. Scurrying back on all fours, I tried as hard as I could to escape with my life. Well, but Remy quickly grabbed my hand. With strength I never thought a girl could have. She pulled me toward her. Yes? Oh, aww. When I, maybe I needed this. I feel better now. And embraced me. Her soft, gentle, uh, soft form gently enveloped my own. It was so warm. I could smell a tiny hint of sweat. Her silky hair tickled the tip of my nose. <laughs> With such an anticlimax, my whole body felt like it was about to give out. <laughs> it's not safe for me anywhere. Her voice was slightly shaky. I couldn't tell if she was crying or not. <laughs> uh oh. Still in, still in the street. I was so confused. Was she not going to kill me? Why was she helping me? The hallucination from before, where all the people of Shibuya disappeared. It wasn't something she'd forced me to see. When I felt such a kind, gentle warmth, when she'd embraced me so innocently. It shook everything I had believed up until that point. Could it be Sakata Rimi wasn't actually a demon at all? I think that was all just, again, just you. <laughs> Cause like in the actual imagery, she wasn't actually there. <laughs> or was it foolish to believe that? What if this was just a cunning way to deceive me. To deceive me all you want. Regardless, one thing was for sure. With Remy hugging me, I felt an incredible sense of relief. I had no idea what to call such a strange sensation. Upon letting go of me, Remy put my face between her hands, then stared at me once again. Her eyes were slightly red. It's like, please, just... <laughs> yes, ma'am. For some reason, I nodded. We were standing still, alone in the middle of the empty intersection. A number of people on the sidewalk waiting for the pedestrian signal to change were watching us closely. We could hear a few people laughing here and there. Many cars had their headlights trained on us and were starting to honk their horns. Hey, fuck you guys! Oh my god, stop being loud! Remy grabbed my hand tightly and started running toward the sidewalk. She pulled me along with her, and I followed. Oh god. That was very loud. <laughs> with countless horns blaring at us, we made it to the sidewalk. 
Remy breathed a sigh of relief and stopped. My hand was still in hers. Please keep holding my hand. <laughs> I needed all. I needed that embrace. Just being held in this way made my heart feel more and more at ease. I wanted to submit myself to this feeling. Same. I wanted to stay like this forever. Remy turned back in my direction. <laughs> she smiled an incredibly happy smile. I didn't know whether it was real or an act or what it was. But... <laughs> no, shut up. You don't want to let go. Because I had been so hostile to her up until now. Because I had thought of her as a demon until now. If I let her win me over like this, I felt like I'd cease being myself. <laughs> oh, and then she quickly lets go of my hand. Imagine seeing that. I turned my back to Remy as she started talking cheerfully. I walked off, pushing my way through the crowd. He's just leaving. He's just leaving. I, we should probably just go home, though. Her voice chased me from behind, but I shook my head in refusal. And there he goes. <laughs> the cheerfulness from before had vanished from her voice. I felt terrible, considering how much she had done to help me, so I... Whoa. Duh. Dude, I'm so surprised. <laughs> barely. Just barely. I managed to squeak out those words. Damn. That's some character development right there. Oh, no. The Billy Williams department. Oh, dude. What is... Like, I'm just... There's, like, so... You know when a thing, like, you have so many questions or, like, things you thought you knew, but then you don't know them anymore, and now you just have more questions? You, like, lost a lot of the answers you thought you had and just have more questions? That's how I feel. That's how I feel every time I play this game. <laughs> of course, everything's more than meets the eye, but, like, shit, dude. <laughs> 